oh my goodness, so many reactions in organic chemistry. How am I going to learn all these reactions? Don't worry. In this video, I'm going to make the chemical reactions of organic chemistry really easy for you. I will show you the logic and special technique for each and every reaction. So if you watch the entire video, you won't have to memorize the reactions. You'll be able to predict the organic reactions yourself. And if you find this video useful, do hit the like button and go and share it out with your friends. And do remember to subscribe to my channel and try the quiz and the top three questions on this video. Links are given below. Let's start with our first reaction, which is combustion. What does combustion mean? It's simple. It means to burn. And these compounds burn in air. So they react with the oxygen in the air. Let's start with the first simple compound. So this is methane. And when it burns in air, it will produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. And also, you know, it produces heat and light energy. So I'll write that here. So the carbon in the hydrocarbon produces carbon dioxide and the hydrogen in the hydrocarbon produces water vapor. Now don't forget to balance the reaction. So we have one carbon and there should be two hydrogen. So that's four and we have two oxygen and two four. So now our reaction is balanced. And we can apply this simple rule for the other reactions also. So any carbon compound, whether it's a saturated hydrocarbon or an unsaturated hydrocarbon, on burning, it will produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. And of course, heat and light energy. So let's try it for the next one. What is this compound? That's right, it's butane. And when it reacts with oxygen, it will produce carbon dioxide and again water vapor. So the same thing plus heat and light. Don't forget to balance it. So there's four carbon here, four carbon, 10, I need to get 10 hydrogen on this side. And how much oxygen do we have here? Four twos are eight and five 13. So now I can show you a simple trick to balance it because we have 13 oxygen on the right side. I can use these fractions to quickly balance the equation. So can you see 13 by 2, so the 2, 2 cancels and now this equation is balanced. But we don't want to leave the fraction in there, so we'll multiply the whole equation by 2. So 4, 2's are 8, so this will become 8 over here and 5, 2's are 10. So that's the quick trick to balance the equation. And where are these uh, compounds used? So methane, you know, is present in CNG, compressed natu natural gas. And there the CNG burns as a fuel carbon dioxide to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor, and it gives us energy. And same way, where is butane used? That's right, butane is used in LPG cylinders. And again, it's used as a clean fuel because it produces only carbon dioxide and water vapor and energy. Now, what is the next reaction? This is C2H4. So that's ethene, right? These were saturated hydrocarbons. This is unsaturated because it has a double bond. But remember, it's simple. On burning, it will just produce, again, carbon dioxide and water vapor. And heat and light. I won't write that again. And so let's quickly balance this one. Two. So we have... 4, 6, and that's our equation. So it's very simple. The next one is, what is this compound? Ethanol or ethyl alcohol. And again on burning, it will produce the same thing. Carbon dioxide and water vapor and heat and light. So let's balance this equation. Don't forget to balance the reactions, right? This is 5, 6, hydrogen, 3, and we have here 4 and 7. 
and uh, yeah so to balance it because six and then there's one more oxygen here right seven so now our equation is balanced and do you know where this guy ethanol is used as a fuel so you might notice if you go to the petrol pumps so when you're filling uh, petrol in the vehicle it's actually written these days the petrol contains 10 percent ethanol so they're mixing ethanol in the petrol because I think ethanol is cheaper than petrol and it also acts as a fuel because it produces heat and light. So what is the basic rule that we learned for combustion reactions? Very easy that for any organic compound whether it's a saturated hydrocarbon an unsaturated hydrocarbon or compounds like alcohol on burning in air they react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor and heat and light energy. So it's really simple. Again, let's look at combustion or burning, but this time in a limited supply of oxygen or a very limited supply of oxygen. Earlier we had seen when there's sufficient oxygen, we get carbon dioxide and water vapor and heat and light energy, right? But when there's limited oxygen, then you're going to get carbon monoxide, plus water vapor and heat and light energy. So how you can remember this? Since the oxygen is limited, it's not going to be CO2. The oxygen will be less here and you'll get the dangerous gas, carbon monoxide. But the hydrogen will still give water vapor. Now let's look at the next case. When there's very limited oxygen, then another oxygen goes out from carbon monoxide and we get carbon and here we have water vapor again. So remember that water vapor stays the same but in sufficient oxygen there's carbon dioxide, in limited oxygen there's carbon monoxide and very limited oxygen there's simply carbon. And again don't forget to balance the equation. So let's quickly balance these here. So this we need to multiply by 2 here. Right, so this equation is balanced and this one we can easily balance just by multiplying by 2, right? So one important thing to learn from here is that that's why the burning of fuels, the carbon compounds should be done in sufficient air so that we get carbon dioxide and water vapor because this will be dangerous, right? When there's limited air, then you'll get the dangerous carbon monoxide gas. That's why the kitchen should be well ventilated or wherever fuels are burnt, there should be enough supply of oxygen. Earlier, we had looked at combustion or burning of carbon compounds. For example, ethanol burns in air to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. Now let's look at a new type of reaction called oxidation. So what's the difference between combustion and oxidation? Combustion is a rapid, it's a spontaneous process. But oxidation is like controlled combustion. So we control the oxidation using oxidizing agents. So here I have some oxidizing agents for you. For example, you can use alkaline potassium permanganate or acidified potassium dichromate. And then we need to heat the reactant here. So here, for example, we can see that we are using the same compound, ethanol, but rather than burning in air, we are using these oxidizing agents. Now these oxidizing agents supply something known as nascent oxygen. So you can see that oxygen is in its atomic form. It's like newly born oxygen and it's highly reactive. So this oxygen will attack our reactant ethanol. And when the oxygen gets added to it, do you know what is produced? That's right, we'll get ethanoic acid. So let me write the formula. So CH3, COOH. So what happens is 
oxygen gets added to the alcohol, ethanol here, and hydrogen gets removed and it gets removed as water. So you can see oxygen is being added, so we get ethanoic acid and the hydrogen is removed and oxygen reacts with that to form water and let us balance our equation here. So this is an example of an oxidation reaction where ethanol gets oxidized with the help of these oxidizing agents to produce ethanoic acid. Now can you guess that when alcohol or alcoholic drinks are left in the open, why do they turn sour? It is because of this reaction. So the ethanol in the alcoholic drinks gets slowly oxidized by atmospheric oxygen and it produces ethanoic acid and you know that acids have a sour taste. So this reaction tells you that why the alcoholic drinks turn sour. Now let us look at the next important type of reaction called substitution reaction. Substitution reaction takes place for unsaturated hydrocarbons, for example methane, ethane, propane and so on because these compounds do not have double or triple bonds. So here we have methane reacting with chlorine and I have written it as CLCL, so I have shown both the atoms here and it is in the presence of sunlight. Now what does substitution mean? Just like in a football game, you know that one player substitutes the other player. So similarly here, chlorine is saying that I want to substitute hydrogen. So chlorine is going to substitute our hydrogen guy. So chlorine will take its place and hydrogen will come out. So let us see what this products will look like. So we will have So these three hydrogens will remain and only one hydrogen comes out. So note that it takes place step by step and here we have a chlorine in here. So this chlorine has substituted the hydrogen and now the hydrogen that comes out joins with this chlorine. So it is not just H2, it is going to be HCl, right? Okay. So as you can see in this reaction, chlorine is substituting hydrogen and then what is our product here? Here we have chloromethane, right? So this is our product, chloromethane or if you look at it this way, CH3Cl, it is basically methyl chloride plus hydrogen chloride. Now will the substitution stop here? No. So we can continue the reaction. So let us see what do we have here. So I am just going to copy this product now as a reactant. And here remember we have a chlorine in here. And then again it is going to react with chlorine in the presence of sunlight. So what do you think is going to be the next step? Again, this chlorine, so one hydrogen is going to come out and take the place here and this chlorine will go and take its place. So what do we have here? And here you can see the hydrogen is substituted by a chlorine atom and here we had the chlorine, okay. And plus what do we get? again HCl because the hydrogen that comes out will join with this fellow. And what is the name of this compound? That is right, it is going to be dichloro, there are two chloros in there. So we have a dichloromethane and hydrogen chloride. Now will this reaction continue? Of course. So again it is very simple, you just need to take the product and copy it on this side and again use chlorine. So then you can imagine 
this hydrogen will get substituted with the chlorine in the next step and then again one more step and this hydrogen will get substituted with another chlorine. So what will be the final product? That's right, tetrachloromethane or simply carbon tetrachloride. So remember it's very simple in a substitution reaction one atom is substituted by the other and this takes place for saturated hydrocarbons. Earlier we had seen the substitution reaction of saturated hydrocarbons. Now let's look at addition reaction of unsaturated hydrocarbons. So unsaturated hydrocarbons are alkenes and alkynes. So here we have ethene and here we have ethyne. Ethene has a double bond as you can see and this one has a triple bond. So let's start with ethene. So if we try to add hydrogen by heating it in the presence of nickel catalyst, let's see what are we going to get. So what happens here is the double bond breaks easily. The double bond breaks like a Kit Kat. So what happens is that the double bond turns into a single bond here. So as you can see, I've broken the double bond and we just have a single bond between the carbon atoms and that's the bond is broken here and hydrogen gets added to it. So we have hydrogen in here. And that's why as you can see, this is called an addition reaction because the hydrogen atoms are getting added to the compound, to ethene here. And what is this compound? That's right, it's called ethane. So you can see from an unsaturated hydrocarbon, we've got a saturated hydrocarbon. Now let's try the next one. And before we go to the next one, let me tell you, it's always good to write these compounds in a structural form like this. So it's very easy to see what's going on. And we had done that earlier also with the substitution reaction. So again, let's take a look here. When, when we take ethyne and add hydrogen, now the triple bond breaks like a Kit Kat. So actually it's going to happen in two steps. So the first thing we are going to get is the triple bond will break into a double bond first and we'll have hydrogens here, okay? And this triple bond is broken and we have single bonds here. And as you can guess what will happen, hydrogen will get added here. So what is this compound? This guy is ethene, right? But the reaction will continue. So again, we'll have plus hydrogen over here, right? To this compound. And what do you think we'll get? We are going to get ethane because again, the double bond will break and hydrogen will get added to it. Now let's look at the last reaction. So here we have oil and these R's that you see here, R represents the alkyl group. So it's basically a chain of carbon atoms. So this oil is basically a unsaturated fat. And when we are adding hydrogen to it in the presence of nickel and heat, what are we going to get? So you can easily predict it yourself. Again, break the double bond like a Kit Kat, right? And you just have to copy these guys here and our double bonds broken into this single bond and very simple hydrogen will simply get added to it. And what we have here, this is our saturated fat. So the unsaturated fat because the double bond has turned into a single bond, a saturated fat. So this is used to convert for example oil into saturated fats like ghee. Okay. And uh, these reactions are also known as hydrogenation reaction. So this one we say is hydrogenation of oil because as you can see in all of these reactions hydrogen gets added. But as we will see in the next uh, reaction that only hydrogen need not be added, we could add other elements also. Now let's look at the reactions of 
ethene, ethyne and ethane with bromine water. Bromine water is basically bromine dissolved in water. So an aqueous solution of bromine. So now can you predict what will happen here? So let's take a look at the first reaction. So this is ethene which is an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So our double bond will again break like a Kit Kat and what will we get? So there you can see the double bond is broken here. And what do you think is going to happen? That's right. The bromine atoms will get added to the ethene here. So we get bromine added here. And what is the name of this compound? 1, 2 dibromoethane. Right? So now let's see if you can try the next one. This is ethyne and when bromine is added to it, what will happen? Again the same thing, the triple bond is going to break like a Kit Kat. So first it will break into a double bond and then into a single bond. So I am not going to show both the steps, I will directly break it down to a single bond between the carbon atoms here. Oops, sorry. So that won't be hydrogen. This is going to be bromine in here, right? Bromine gets added and our bond is bro broken down here. So we have the bromine atoms being added here, right? Because ethyne had just two hydrogens. So the triple bond broke down to a double, then to a single bond and we have bromine atoms added. And what's the name of this compound? One, so again you should number it, one, two, two, one. So, uh, and reverse numbering like this, right? Uh, so it's going to be one, comma, one, comma, two, comma, two, tetrabromoethane, right? Now what's the interesting thing here? Because bromine is a reddish brown color it has. So it has a reddish brown color. And when it reacts with these unsaturated compounds, it gets used up. So we, what is the observation for these two? The color of bromine, that is the reddish brown color, fades away for these two reactions, right? Now let's take a look what will happen in this case. So will the same thing happen? Will the reddish brown color of bromine fade away for ethane? No, because Ethane is a saturated hydrocarbon. There is only a single bond between the carbon atoms. There is no double or triple bond. So no Kit Kats to break here, right? So addition reaction won't happen here. So let me draw a line. This is not addition reaction. It will actually go for substitution. Means hydrogen will come out and bromine will get added. But we know that addition reactions are much faster than substitution reaction because it's easy to break the double or triple bond and add the atoms. Substitution is a much slower reaction. So for our practical purpose, we can say the reaction happens very slowly or we simply say no reaction for this case. Why the main thing is that the reddish brown color will hardly fade away or it won't fade. So the reddish brown color will remain. So this bromine water test is an excellent test to distinguish between saturated hydrocarbons and unsaturated hydrocarbons. Because in the case of unsaturated hydrocarbon as we discussed, the bromine gets used up and so the reddish brown color fades away. But in saturated hydrocarbons, the bromine does not get uh, used up. So it doesn't decolorize, the reddish brown color does not fade away. So we can easily distinguish between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbons. And you can use it also to distinguish between cooking oil and butter. Because you know cooking oil falls in this category. It's an unsaturated hydrocarbon. So the color will fade away. But butter is a saturated fat. So in that case, no reaction happens and it won't decolorize. Now let's look at the reactions of ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Remember we had done this before. When ethanol is burnt in air, it produces carbon dioxide and water vapor and heat and light energy. So that's simple. 
But when we have ethanol reacting with oxidizing agents like alkaline potassium permanganate or acidified potassium dichromate, then the nascent oxygen oxidizes this. So this is an oxidation. And in this controlled oxidation, we get ethanoic acid, acetic acid and water, right? So note the difference between these two. This was combustion and this is controlled combustion or basically oxidation. Now let's look at another interesting reaction where ethanol reacts with sodium metal. So what do you think is going to happen here? Remember, sodium is a very reactive metal and it's high up in the reactivity series compared to hydrogen, which is way below. So sodium is going to displace hydrogen. It's a single displacement reaction here. So what's going to happen? Sodium displaces the hydrogen in that reaction. So hydrogen comes out and we have sodium in here. And sodium is represented with a positive symbol because it has a positive charge and this part has a negative charge and as you can expect hydrogen comes out as hydrogen gas okay and what is the name of this compound it's called sodium ethoxide so sodium and that part is called ethoxide so you need to remember that name right and don't forget to balance the reaction how do we balance it everything is balanced except hydrogen so I can quickly do a half here and now you can see the reaction is balanced but we can't leave fractions in there so let's multiply the whole thing by 2 so we'll get and this will go away right and our reaction is quickly balanced now now this reaction is very important because it can be used as a test for ethanol ethyl alcohol because the hydrogen gas that's produced okay can be tested because you know that hydrogen burns with a pop sound. So this reaction with sodium that produces sodium ethoxide and hydrogen can be used as a test for ethanol because hydrogen gas burns with a pop sound. Now let's look at some more reactions of ethanol. So in the first reaction we have ethanol or ethyl alcohol and I've written it out as this expanded structure here and we are using concentrated sulfuric acid at 170 degrees centigrade and you may know that concentrated sulfuric acid is a dehydrating agent so it's going to dehydrate this alcohol and remove the water in here so H2SO will pull out that water and what do you think we are going to get that's right we'll be left with ethene so take a look here when the water comes out, we have two carbon and four hydrogen left and this will become a double bond. So the compound is going to be ethene as you can easily see from here and plus water will come out. So concentrated sulfuric acid dehydrates the alcohol and produces ethene. Now let's look at the next reaction. So here we have ethanol reacting with ethanoic acid or acetic acid. And in this case, it's better to write ethanol as C2H5OH. We'll see why. So what you're going to uh, do here to predict this reaction, we are going to break the acid because we know that acid releases H+. Okay, It releases H plus ion and that is the negative part, the acetate part of acetic acid. And let me show you a trick here. You should also try to break this alcohol as C2H5 plus and the minus. Now this is a secret trick, okay? So don't show this in the exam. You can do it in pencil and then erase it off. So remember, break the acid into a plus and minus part and you know it releases H plus and that's negative. And alcohol also you can informally break it as C2H5 plus and the, you know, the OH is the minus part. Now it will work like a double displacement, okay? Because this plus will combine with this minus and this with this plus with this minus. 
So now all you have to do is just play Lego. So we are going to join this part. So this is our acetate part, which I'm going to just simply copy here. So CH3, COO, and then I'll join this positive part here because H plus will go out and we'll have C2, H5. And what are we left with? HOH. So that's simple. That's water. Now, do you know who is this guy? Right? This is a very important compound. These types of compounds are called esters that are formed by the reaction of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Okay? And this produces an ester. Let's try to name the ester. So to name it, again, you break it down here like it formed. So the name of this ester is going to be, these are called alkyl alkanoids. So the name of this part is going to be ethyl. So I'm going to write it here. So ethyl C2H5. And what is the name of this? It comes from ethanoic acid. So it's ethanoid. So this is the IUPAC name of this ester. And it has a sweet smell or a fruity odor. So this is a great test for testing the alcohol or for testing carboxylic acids because this reaction produces a sweet smelling ester. And this reaction is very important. It's called esterification. And I'm sure this reaction is going to come in your exam. So take careful note of it. A carboxylic acid reacting with alcohol produces the ester. We did that plus minus trick and we got ethyl ethanoid and water. Okay. So conch H2SO4 again is used to dehydrate or pull out the water and speed up the reaction. Now let's see, can you predict this last one? Again, first carefully look, what do we have here? Here we have an acid. This is methanoic acid or formic acid. So again, simply break it down. So try it yourself. So it produces H plus and that's the negative part. And again, informally break this alcohol, right? As plus minus. Now all you have to do is you have to join these guys. So these guys will join and these guys will join, right? So what do we get here? So you just have to copy that part. So first copy the acid part, HCOO, and replace the H plus with ethyl C2H5. And we are simply left with water. Okay. So that's so easy to predict these reactions. And this is our ester here. Now, can you try to name this ester? What is the name going to be? Try it yourself. It's going to be, there's an ethyl here. So we are going to write ethyl. Again, to name it, you can break it down the way it was formed. Ethyl, and this has come from methanoic acid. Can you see methanoic acid or formic acid here? So it's called ethyl methanoate. That's the IUPAC name or ethyl formate will be the common name. Similarly, the common name of this guy is going to be ethyl acetate because it came from acetic acid. So both these reactions are examples of esterification and they produce esters here as you can see. And these are remember sweet smelling compounds. So that acts as a test for either the alcohol which is ethanol in our case or the carboxylic acids because you need a carboxylic acid to produce the ester as we'll see later in this video. Now are you ready to take a look at the reactions of ethanoic acid? Ethanoic acid is commonly known as acetic acid and the formula is CH3COOH. So let's take a look at the first reaction where it reacts with sodium carbonate. Now the trick of these reactions to predict them first you break down the acid okay because the acid you know releases H plus or hydronium ions. So it releases H plus and this is the acetate part the negative ion and you do the same for sodium carbonate. So we know it breaks here right. So this is the positive sodium ion and the negative carbonate ion. You don't have to write the two minus valency, just plus minus, right? And now simply we have to join this negative part with this positive and this one with this. It's a 
double displacement reaction, right? An exchange of ions. So what are we going to get here? What do you think is the answer? It's going to be, so I'm going to copy this down, CH3CO. So the negative acetate part, and I'm going to add sodium to it. So this compound is sodium acetate, or the IUPAC name will be sodium ethanoid, because it came from ethanoic acid. And then H plus and carbonate combine to form carbonic acid, H2CO3. But that breaks down as water and carbon dioxide gas, right? Okay, so this is our reaction. And carbon dioxide gas, it comes out with a brisk effervescence. And you know how to test this gas? You pass it through lime water and lime water will turn milky. So that's the simple way to predict this reaction where we are getting sodium, ethanoid, water and carbon dioxide. Now can you try the next one? It's again the same thing. So again, it's like cutting the cake. So we'll cut the acid here, right? And this is the plus part, right? And this is the minus. Again, in the exam, you can do all this in pencil and erase it off because you don't want to leave the reaction like this, right? And now this is an interesting one. We have sodium bicarbonate, right? Or sodium hydrogen carbonate. Where do we cut this? So carefully look, the positive radical is sodium, the positive ion, and the negative ion is bicarbonate, okay? And again, you have to do the exchange of ions, double displacement. So what are we gonna get? It's gonna be the same thing. CH3, COO, Na, right? Sodium ethanoid or sodium acetate. And then again, the same as the first reaction because H plus and uh, bicarbonate will form H2CO3 and that will break down with as carbon dioxide and water. So again, carbon dioxide comes out with a brisk effervescence and we can use the lime water test to test it. So these two tests, uh, uh, reactions can be used to test ethanoic acid, right? Okay, so now let's move on to the next reaction. So what is that? Again, you have ethanoic acid and this time it's reacting with sodium hydroxide. So we are going to do the same thing here. We'll break it as plus, minus, okay, and the same thing here because you know sodium hydroxide breaks as sodium ion and hydroxyl ion. So what are we going to get? It's pretty easy. Again, you exchange the ions and we are going to get the same thing you can see. CH3, COONA, sodium acetate or sodium ethanoid. Sodium acetate is the common name. Sodium ethanoid is the IUPAC name. And plus, here it's going to be only water, HOH right? And what type of reaction is this one? That's right, it's neutralization. Because can you see, this is an acid here, and this is a base. So an acid and base are reacting to form salt and water. So the carboxylic acid reacts with the sodium hydroxide base. So this reaction is basically a neutralization. right? This one. Okay. Oh, and before I forget, uh, check if all the reactions are balanced. So this one is balanced, right? This one is also balanced. Oh, okay. I forgot to balance the first one. So don't forget to balance the uh, reactions in the exam. So you can see there's two sodium here. So we need two here. And therefore, we need two of these. Now I think we have it balanced, right? Carbon dioxide, water, yeah, it's balanced now. And these two are balanced, okay? Now let's move on to the last reaction. Ethanoic acid, but now instead of the base, sodium hydroxide, we have ethyl alcohol or ethanol. And remember, this is not a base because alcohols are neutral. So we are having a reaction of acid and a alcohol. 
and conch H2SO4 is used as a dehydrating agent. So have we seen this reaction somewhere? Yes, we saw it in ethanol, right? Because a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol to produce ester in water. So it's not salt in water, it's going to be ester in water. And what's the trick for doing that? Again, the same thing, just break it down, plus minus, right? Acid releases H plus. And this one, you informally break it down as C2H5 plus and OH minus. And don't forget to erase all this in the exam. You don't want to leave the reaction like this, right? These are just the techniques to predict it. And now what do you have to do? Just simply pl play Lego. Just bring this here. So I'll get the acetate part. Always that's written first and then the H plus is replaced with C2H5. So we're going to add that. Okay. And plus, you know, HOH will combine to give water. So what have we got here? Acid plus alcohol gives us ester plus water. And what is the name of this reaction? This was known as, so this reaction we are talking about was called esterification. Right? Remember this reaction is esterification. Why? Because an ester is produced here. Okay? And this is the sweet smelling ester. So it can be used to test the presence of a carboxylic acid. So when you add ethanol to it, it will produce a sweet smelling ester. And what is the name of this ester? Remember, ethyl ethanoid. Again, to name it, you break it down here, the way it was formed by joining these two parts. So ethyl ethanoid or ethyl acetate is the common name of this ester. So all these reactions of acid are very easy. If you just simply use this breaking trick, right? Break it into the positive and negative parts. And we did it for all the reactions here. So you can remember that. And there you get the answer very easily. Now let's take a look at the next type of reaction, saponification. In saponification reactions, esters are used. So let's quickly revise how an ester is produced. So remember, a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol. So we have ethanoic acid reacting with ethanol to produce our ester here and water. And can you see the ester we have here? It's ethyl ethanoid. Now we'll take this ester and react it with sodium hydroxide. So an alkali like sodium hydroxide. So here you can see that same ester being used. And when you heat it with sodium hydroxide, what do we get? Again, let's use our trick of breaking this stuff. So sodium hydroxide, you know, breaks as Na plus and OH minus. And similarly, we'll break the ester the way it's formed, right? So it'll break here. And this is our acetate ion, the negative ion. And this is the C2H5. So again, we'll do our double displacement. So we are going to exchange the plus minus part here. And what are we going to get? So you can easily predict it. It's going to be CH3, COO, Na. So that's sodium ethanoid. I've combined the plus and minus, and then we are going to combine these two. And what do we get? Ethanol, right? So here we have sodium ethanoid and ethanol. And this reaction is called saponification. So this is our saponification reaction or it's also known as hydrolysis of esters. So I'm going to write that here. Because we are hydrolyzing an ester using sodium hydroxide here. Okay. And we are producing a sodium salt of the acid. So sodium ethanoid. And this reaction is very important because it's used in the soap industry. So let's take a look at that example. So in the soap industry, they use a fat or oil, which is basically an ester. And they heat it with an alkali like sodium hydroxide here. Right. So it's just like this reaction, an ester plus sodium hydroxide. The only difference is this ester is very simple. It's ethyl ethanoid. 
but the fats or oils have many carbons in them, right? And what are we going to produce? So this reaction produces soap. Okay, and plus some alcohol. And this soap here is a sodium salt of a fatty acid. So this soap here is exactly like this. It's a sodium salt of a fatty acid. And these fatty acids, they have many carbons in them. So that's why this reaction is also, so both these reactions are example of saponification where in this reaction we are producing soap and this is a very simplistic one which can also be called saponification where the ester used is having less number of carbons and this is used for the manufacture of soap. And here's one last reaction for you and I want you to try this yourself. So go ahead and use the techniques that we've learned in this video and try to predict the products of this reaction. And do let me know your answer by putting it in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful. So now you don't have to memorize all the reactions. You can easily use these tips and tricks to predict the organic reactions. And do remember to like, comment and share out this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button right now. And do click the notification bell to get notified about new videos. You can also check my Facebook page and do check out my website manochaacademy.com for more videos like this and for the quiz and the top three questions on this video. I'll put the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.